Hello learners, welcome to NIOS. Today we will take up your physical education yoke subject. We will study lesson number 14. The title of lesson is sports training. We will study this lesson in two parts. So let us begin with the first part of the lesson number 14. Dear learners, before we start, let us know about the what are the objectives of this particular lesson. In this lesson, we will study the meaning and concept of a sports training. We will explain principles of a sports training. We will describe fitness and its component. At the last, we will also know about the aerobic and anaerobic exercises. So let us start with meaning of a sports training. Sports training is a process of systematic prepa preparing of a sports person or team to perform well in a sports competition. In this sports person or a team get systematic training which is based on scientific principles. The goal of a sports training is to train a sports person or team to achieve their full potential and performance optimally in a particular competition. Sports training includes physiological conditioning, psychological training, skill training and training of game, game plan which is also known as strategy. Now we are going to learn about principles of sports training. Sports training principles are the guiding force for coaches or trainers to plan effectively their training schedule for sports persons or different teams. For an effective use of training principle, it should be taken into consideration for individualized training. The principles of sports training are the principle of balance says, basically the principle of balance uh, focuses broadly focuses on right proportion of each and every performance determined factors such as physical capacities, psychological makeup and skill level. As we know, uh, sports performance is dependent on different factors and balance between them. The other principle is principle of individualization. As we know, every human being are different from each other. So this principle deals with the individual differences. Each training schedule should be designed considering the individual differences. Like the uh, demand for individuals vary with one to another. Like uh, if we are going to train an adult and old age person. So this principle is basically focus that kind of individual differences. Principle of overload means uh, no athlete a trainer, trainee should be given loads beyond his or her abilities. See, uh, every human being have their potential and their load uh, taking capacity. So, it uh, every trainer or coaches should know that we should not stretch their limit. We have to give uh, the load which is they can tolerate. So, this principle says this. Now, uh, the principle of recovery, the uh, ratio of rest and recovery between exercise and time between workout must be take, taken care. See, if uh, we are not going to take appropriate amount of rest and uh, so our performance will be uh, affected. So, uh, the trainers and coaches should focus the, uh, on the recovery. Now, principle of reversibility. Basically, uh, this principle states that when you stop walking out, you lose, uh, you lose the effect of training. It is sometimes referred to as the use or use it or loss it principle. This uh, sounds like common sense, but the science behind the reversibility principle is more complex. Moreover, on the plus side, it states that when you resume walking out, you begin to make gains again. While the reversibility principle is often perceived as a negative thing, exercise physiologists are discovering that it can be a positive thing as well. Principle of specificity. As we know, uh, there are different kinds of sports. Someone, uh, some is team sports, individual sports, combative sports. So, each sport demands a specific requirement and this principle guides regarding game specific requirement. Means if you are going to train a football player, their requirement is totally, totally different with 
an archer or shooter. So, we have to focus the specificity of the particular game or sports. Now, the principle of transfer. This principle says, basically this principle deals with the uh, with how the workout performed during the training session can contribute to competitive performance. Now, uh, the principle of variation. For obtaining better results of, of, uh, of a sports training, variation in exercise, resting time and intensity should be considered. Now, we are going to uh, learn what is the aim of a sports training. The aim of sports training is to train an individual or a team to achieve top form and perform better in a selected sports competition. Different factors are responsible for achieving top form of maximum efficiency. Sports training focuses on reaching top form or maximum efficiency. Learners, we have learned about the sports training, its principle and its aim. Now we are going to discuss about which physical fitness components uh, get trained in sports training. The first component is physical fitness. Here we are going to discuss about physical fitness only. The ability to perform, physical, fi physical fitness is basically the ability to perform day to day work without undue fatigue is termed as physical fitness. It encompasses a wide range of abilities so that one can carry out daily routine with ease and overcome the physical changes during sport, physical challenges during sports competitions. The first component of physical fitness is endurance. Basically, endurance is the ability to perform activity or any task with desired quantity and quality as well under condition of fatigue like uh, uh, continuous running for 15 minutes and above is best example of endurance. Endurance may be divided into cardiovascular endurance and muscular endurance. The other physical fitness component is strength. Strength is basically the ability to overcome or to act against resistance. It can be divided into three types. The first one is maximum strength, second one is explosive strength and third one is strength endurance. Now we learn what is maximum st strength says. Basically maximum strength is the ability to overcome or to act against maximum resistance and the explosive strength, it is a combination of strength and speed ability. It can be defined as the ability to overcome or to act against resistance with high speed. Strength endurance, it is the ability to overcome or to act against a resistance when we are in under condition of fatigue. Speed, the other component of physical fitness is speed. Basically, it is the ability to cover a distance of uh, or perform any action in minimum possible time. Sometimes it is says it is the quickness of movements of our limbs. Speed may be divided into five subcomponents which are reaction ability, movement speed, acceleration ability, locomotion ability, sorry locomotor ability and last speed endurance. First we know what reaction ability says. Basically uh, it is the ability to react effectively and quickly on a signal. When someone given us a signal then we have how fast, how quickly we, re we react uh, on that signal that is reaction ability. Now movement speed, it is the ability to do single movement in a minimum possible time. Suppose when we are going to take one stride, the distance between first stride to other stride is how quickly we are performing that stride that is basically a movement speed. Acceleration ability. It is the ability to achieve high speed of locomotion from a stationary position or uh, from a slow moving position. So, when we are in a uh, slow moving position or uh, stationary position, then how quickly are loco, uh, we are achieving our locomotion that is termed as acceleration ability. Locomotion ability, it is the ability to maintain maximum speed of locomotion for maximum possible duration or distance. The last subcomponent of speed is speed endurance. It is the ability to do sports movement with high speed under condition of fatigue. The other component of uh, physical fitness is flexibility. Basically, uh, it is the ability of joints, means uh, flexibility is the ability of joints to move 
full range of motion. Flexibility can be divided in two types. One is active flexibility and second one is passive flexibility. So, active flexibility says it is the ability to do movement with greater amplitude with external help is called active flexibility. Whereas, the passive flexibility, uh, passive, uh, flexibility says when we are taking help from someone else, uh, we can say external help to perform or to uh, give movement to our, uh, our joints that is called passive flexibility. Now, coordinative abilities, ability to quickly and respectively doing group of movements with better quantity and effect is known as coordinative abilities. Uh, with the terms you can understand it is uh, ab it is the coordination, it is the coordination between different kind of abilities. Uh, so, what different abilities are there? Uh, first one is orientation ability, then coupling ability, balancing ability, differentiation ability, rhythmic ability and last one is reaction ability. When we coordinate all these activities uh, that is coined a term that is coordinative abilities. So, let us uh, learn what is adaptation ability. It is the ability to adjust or completely change the movement program during the movement on the basis of change or anticipated change in the situation. The other ability which is comes in uh, coordinative abilities that is balancing ability. So, it is the ability to maintain balance during whole body movements and to regain balance quickly after balance disturbing movement. So, balance ability can be of two types static balance and dynamic balance. Now, what coupling ability says? Basically, it is the ability to coordinate body parts or uh, coordinate uh, body parts movement with one another and in relation to a definite goal oriented whole body movement. Differentiation ability, it is the ability to achieve a high level of fine tuning, a harmony of individual movement phase and body part movements. Reaction ability, we have learned this ability in uh, speed ability, it is the ability to react effectively and quickly on a signal. A rhythmic ability, it is the ability to perceive the externally given rhythm and to reproduce it in a motor action. The last one is orientation ability. It is the ability to determine and change the position and movement of a body in a time and a space in relation to definite field of action. Learners, uh, with this we have reached the end of lesson 14 part 1. In this video, we have studied about the meaning, definition and principles of sports training along with physical fitness and its component. We will continue with the present topic in second part of this lesson. I hope you liked watching this video. Namaskar.